Now, the rest of the story. Hey, welcome back. See that cow running? Well, I'll let you guys in a little secret. She's running for a reason. Reason. Let's see if we can't find out why. Well, I know why, but I don't know if you guys are interested in that or not. But I guess I'll just go ahead and break the secret or let you guys in on a little surprise. Uh, my cows, yes, my whole two cows and a heifer I have. Well, out of the two cows, they were bred for, well, about two weeks ago actually, so she's kind of behind. But I don't know how fast the bull was getting to work. But somebody had a junior. And she didn't appreciate me tagging her last night. So she's trying to do the whole misleading thing. She's gonna try to sit and look that way when I know the calf is actually that way. She's probably gonna to wanna to start walking the other way to kind of throw me off. That's kind of how cows work, but what she doesn't know is I know exactly where the junior is. I saw him before I came in the driveway tonight. Let's see if he's gonna stick his head up. You gotta try to be quiet. The last thing I need is be going into the neighbor's place looking for a calf. All right. You see at the end of my finger there? Just to the right of that bush. There's just a little tuft of black. Yeah, see? Cows are good at that. It's the whole, you know, misleading information thing. So you think just because she's going that way in Bellerin, the calf is that way. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Little Miss Junior. I call them, all calves are Junior. I got that from my grandpa. My grandpa used to, every Holstein calf we got was Junior. Um, especially when we had fresh cow or something like that. Hey, go get Junior, bring him into the barn. You know, if we had a calf out in the barnyard. And I really don't want to freak her out because it is a girl. It's a heifer. She is going to be staying around here for a long time. At least that's the plan. But last night when I tagged her, she came right to me. I mean, young and dumb. I've said that a few times on the farm. Or a few times uh, on YouTube. Uh, that's exactly what this calf was. She was new, she was pretty fresh. Her umbilical was still very fresh. But um, what she did is she actually ran right to me last night. Really nice, and yeah, see mom's making her way back over here. Um, she actually ran right to me last night, so I had the tag ready. Went and slapped a blue tag in her ear. She's good to go. I don't have to do anything else to her until this fall when I go ahead and wean her off. Ideally, I gotta do some work to that shed up there. Uh, let's see, little bitty camera screen, I can't see where I'm pointing. Well, there's the silos to the right of that, the pole shed. Uh, it's got a lean-to on it, I gotta do some work to that. I gotta get it set up so I can go ahead and wean off all the calves this fall because we have all my dad's cows down here. They're gonna be weaning the calves off down here. Um, so I gotta get the tin and the wall and everything fixed up on that this summer but I have at least at least I have all summer to do it and this little girl is going to be thrown right in with the rest I have the I have a black cow and a red cow and I actually have a red angus heifer I do not know if the red angus heifer is bred to be honest with you uh, she was bred the same time as these guys but the only problem is that she doesn't really look like she's all that uh well be honest she doesn't look like, she, look like she's pregnant so two out of three still better than 50 percent, i guess you could say but um at least if these two freshen especially now that i actually have a heifer out of these two i've been trying to get a heifer out of both of these cows for the last three years uh, not very good luck so i'm actually if you guys can't tell in my voice i'm super duper grateful um this is a girl um a heifer they're heifers until they have their first calf and I'm pushing my luck here seeing if she won't let me walk right up to her uh, last night I said she she walked up to me I tagged her and the alarming part is is that the cow is okay but the problem is even your friendliest cow can kill you I mean, especially when you involve a, a calf into the mix 
And that's exactly what I was concerned about last night. Um, I've had that cow since 15. Um, mellow cow she was the best cow out of the whole herd she was always, always the one that would come up to me and everything else like that but the alarming part that i had last night is that this is the second calf i've had i've had out of that cow and this one in particular because it's the first one i've actually had out in the pasture where i've actually had a chance to tag it right away she's got her head she's sticking her head up just over the hill there and the problem i had is with the calf running towards me the cow was chasing the calf and the, as the calf was chasing me. And the reason that's a bit of a concern is that I've had calves run right between my legs before and keep going. And the only problem is if the calf is behind me going that way, that leaves me facing mom trying to chase the calf. So like I said, when it comes to dealing with animals, that's the big downside to having livestock not just cows, pigs, chickens, anything else like that. But when it comes to livestock compared to raising corn and soybeans or just row crops in general or grain crops, the thing is with crops is that when you put them in the ground, they stay there. The problem you have with livestock is they got legs. They can chase you. They can run away from you. They can run away in general. Uh, they can get out of the fence. You can get phone calls at two o'clock in the morning wondering if, uh, hey, these cows that are currently walking across the highway, are they yours? <laughs> they weren't that time, by the way. But say cows can be uh, pretty temperamental. I've never done goats, sheep, anything else like that. No intention to. The woven wire was here for, oh, uh, my dad and the farmhand at the time put this stretch of fence in. And it's actually holding up really well for woven wire. But I got some trees here that I'm gonna be pulling out because I do not want the trees to get carried away and destroy a perfectly good fence. Same thing with up there. I gotta clean out that fence row again. This little pasture, this little patch right here, um, this whole corner was solid trees. Back in, I wanna say 17, I went through and then with the skid steer, I did a bunch of redneck bulldozing. And the ground was soft, but firm enough that I could get around with the bobcat. So what I was doing is I was reaching up high and I was actually able to push enough on the tree and had enough traction with the machine. That I was actually able to uproot everything and I really opened this up and I got a pretty good little patch of grass growing now um, this pasture is just the house pasture it gets the priority cows I mean the reason they're priority is because I have two and it this pasture will run two just fine I have that feeder heifer that I wanted to bring in here but she's just a little young and dumb yet uh, to the point where she's just she's touchy she's hyper she's mean that's the one thing I'm concerned about that red angus I have I mean they can all it doesn't matter what type of cattle they are they can all be mean and that's the thing I'm worried about with that that heifer I have that red angus heifer is that she's flighty uh, she won't let you do anything with her these guys um, I walked them up across my yard and they were in so can't really complain I'm trying to push my luck here until he takes off on me I don't know if I shouldn't just quit while I'm ahead but I would have preferred if she was a a red Angus but at this point beggars can't be choosers and she's got a nice little black coat on her really fluffy by the way and make really good teddy bear if you could just train them properly so I don't have any names for her and I don't really want to disturb her anymore so with that just try to get away from her because I've had that uh, three days ago. We tagged one of Ryan's calves, did the exact same thing. We grabbed him, we tagged him, set him loose, and like calves are like little rocket launchers. You gotta set them down facing the direction you want them to go because they'll do exactly that. They run straight. And what happened was, is I didn't follow my own advice. I set the calf loose towards his mom. So I guess it's not 100% my fault. Um, I set the calf loose towards his mom, but the problem is his mom was standing right next to the fence to the next pasture, which they're not allowed to go into yet. So what happened was he went running straight towards mom, right past mom, right through a barbed wire fence into a brush, a big old well, brush thicket actually. And I had to go through and dig him out and bring him back. So, it is what it is. I am trying to grow my cow herd. That's 
a dead horse. Um, the reason I haven't really gotten carried with buying cattle is because I don't want to borrow money to buy cattle right now. The farm economy sucks, or the markets suck, should I say. And I don't have any money in these cows that I have. Um, these are pur purely out of pocket. Um, both these guys are. And the thing is, with cattle, as long as you keep your heifers back, I mean, I have two this year, technically three. Let's just assume that just these two cows have, have calves. If at least one of them has a heifer, um, that leaves me three heifers next year. And then as you go, say, in the following season, whatever, well, as soon as that heifer is able to start calving and get bre getting bred and gets into a cycle, um, you get you get with three cows, and then say two of those three have heifers. So then you have two. So then now you went from three cows to five, and then it just gradually increases as you go. So if you have five, yeah, say now she's got to go check on her because she doesn't trust me. What's what's not the trust? I'm a nice guy. So all right, guys, I'm gonna head in. It looks nice out. It's not exactly sweatshirt weather anymore. Uh, the sun's getting low enough that fingers are starting to get cold. It's somebody needs to tell summer that or spring that uh, we need to get out of the 40 degree weather stuff. This is the first day it's hit 60s in probably a week. So, oh, here comes a calf. And yeah, she got him woken up. She's bringing him this way. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Take care, take it easy, keep in touch. No planting progress yet. You know what? I'm thinking maybe tomorrow. Um, the fields are dry on top, they're wet underneath. They're saying rain in two days. It is too soft to run today. I mean, we were really thinking about it. But ideally, you can see Ryan actually made a pass right here with the VT. That's when he called me the other night. Um, he called me up and he said that it's too soft. He's Ryan made the call. It was his decision to actually quit working that night because it was, well, it was 3 in the morning. And exactly that. It was chiseled ground. And he said that he was actually having a hard time. Oh, not just a hard time. He was literally spinning out with the, VT, uh, the 82. He said that it was just, he was finding some soft spots. And he's just like, you're going to be mudding it in. Well, I don't want to mud it in anymore, and I absolutely had to. These are soybeans at least, but the soybean stubble, that's going to get hit once with the VT, where we plant corn right into it. And you guys will be seeing plenty of that once we get going, because I am going to try my hardest to, uh, ooh, uh, try my hardest uh, to get as much footage as I can for you guys, to try to keep you guys up to date with everything that's going on. And I promise you that as of right now we have not done any more planting up to the filming of this video so all right i'm rambling now which i'm good at so thanks for watching take care take it easy keep in touch i'll talk to you guys tomorrow night